The season three finale of The Mandalorian is finally here, and we finally understand the full scope of Moff Gideon's sinister plan to retake the galaxy in the Empire's vision. Spoilers ahead for chapter 24 of The Mandalorian, The Return, including connections to General Grievous, Starkiller, and some of the most controversial Force sensitives in the entire Star Wars lore. Let's get into it. In the episode, we come to learn that Gideon was collecting Grogu's genetic material for one purpose and one alone which was to create Force-sensitive clones of none other than himself, Moff Gideon. We are introduced to the trial phases of roughly a dozen clones of Gideon, each posed to become an incredibly powerful Force-sensitive. But why did Gideon believe that he was the ultimate trump card? And why did he believe the Force was the missing ingredient? But also, why would this never work? What motivated Moff Gideon to take this approach, and how was this plan ultimately futile no matter how Din Djarin and the Mandalorians would have interfered? Today, acolytes of the galaxy and students of the Force will answer that question, as well as break down exactly what motivated Moff Gideon and why it would have definitively ended in a disaster. The idea of giving someone Force sensitivity is not a new concept to Star Wars lore, and the practice of making somebody Force sensitive is something that can be traced all the way back to the Clone Wars. During the early days of the war and the amassing of the droid army, Darth Sidious and the Separatist movement began developing a plan that would allow none other than General Grievous to inherit Force sensitivity. Grievous, despite not being naturally attuned to the power of the Force, much like we see Gideon attempting to do here. The premise was to turn Grievous into an absolute war machine, capable of not only slaughtering Jedi Masters by the dozen, but having the Force at his side in order to do so. Grievous would have theoretically served as a dark side executioner, despite not being formally inducted into the Rule of Two. Much like how the Sith Lords of old employed Force-sensitive generals to act as commanding legions to their armies, Grievous would have essentially become a dark Jedi. Grievous, who himself was fascinated with Force sensitives, much like Moff Gideon was. In fact, in canon, this is the whole reason why Grievous underwent his cybernetic alterations, to attempt to mimic and touch the gift of the Force that he would never naturally be able to. While these experiments were ultimately unsuccessful, they did set a precedent and research was conducted, which again, Moff Gideon was likely aware of. In the Clone Wars, it was actually the blood of Jedi Master Sifo Dyas that Count Dooku attempted to implant within General Grievous. Grievous, who had just undergone a massive injury in a sabotage on behalf of the Sith with Dooku hoping that the blood of a Jedi Master would eventually result in Grievous' fourth sensitivity. Again though, this was unsuccessful. After the rise of the Empire though, it is not unreasonable to believe that Moff Gideon concluded that Palpatine himself was force sensitive. We know this given his proximity to Vader, the rule of two, and the history of the Sith which would have most likely made him aware of Palpatine's true nature and religion. Gideon even previously stated to the Shadow Council that he had spies all over the galaxy. To Moff Gideon, who serves himself and not the Greater Empire, Palpatine and his reign over the Empire is an inspiration to be admired and emulated. Despite Palpatine's atrocities, Imperials like Gideon held the Emperor in such high esteem that they could only hope to follow in the great Palpatine's footsteps. But in the years since the splintering of the Empire, nobody had been successful in rising through the ranks. None of these Imperials had been able to reform the Empire despite much of its resources and connections still being intact. Rather than having someone else assume the mantle of the Emperor though, the Empire was allowed to simply dissipate, and while we would later come to find out that this was by Palpatine's design, it still served to cement the futility in trying to replace Darth Sidious. So, Gideon would naturally begin to ask himself why nobody else could do what Palpatine did. Why couldn't any of the Imperial commanders pull these resources back together and get the Empire back on track? Moff Gideon concluded that the answer lie within Force sensitivity, as Palpatine was not only able to harness the power of the Force, but he was one of the most powerful Force users that the galaxy had ever known. Gideon believed this to be the missing link, and this makes perfect sense as to why he would embark on such a crusade to clone himself. A new Emperor Force-sensitive, pulling research from the Clone Wars and combining it with Dr. Pershing's research in order to create an army of Gideon clones. So then, if this was such a brilliant idea and the Force was in fact this missing link, then why was it doomed to fail regardless of how the Mandalorians intervened? 
The answer lies in the complications that arise when someone attempts to clone a force wielder. While most of these examples are in legends, there is evidence to suggest that some of these storylines may be adapted in the near future. We can point to a few examples to showcase just how severe some of the complications and issues can be. Let's begin with the obvious one in Darth Vader's own apprentice, Galen Merrick, formerly known as Starkiller. During his life, the clone of Starkiller became plagued by memories of the original, causing intense confusion regarding the true nature and identity of an individual. Starkiller's clone was largely unable to keep his mind straight, and this record of mental instability goes far beyond just him. There were hundreds of Galen Merrick clones, all of which went insane. Darth Vader and Legends continuity, in essence, had the exact same plan as Moff Gideon, to clone an army of Force sensitives, but even Vader, who was familiar with the Force, could not get it to function. But what of another example? One of the most notable Jedi to ever be cloned goes by the name of Joris Sabayoth, who was cloned from a Clone Wars veteran of the same name. In his early years, the clone of Joris Sabayoth aided in the Thrawn campaign, aiding in the new Imperial leadership as a highly trained and incredibly dangerous Dark Jedi. For a time, he seemed an adept combatant and talented Force user, one who helped Thrawn to sink his fangs into the fractured remains of the galaxy. However, due to a combination of his sensitivity to the Force, as well as rapid aging, the clone began to undergo very similar bouts of mental instability and insanity, becoming increasingly aggressive and less rational. Similarly around this time, a clone was produced from the severed hand of Luke Skywalker, which would have been recovered on Bespin shortly following his duel with Vader. This clone of Luke, known simply as Luke, spelled with two U's, was no different than either of the aforementioned cases, and in many ways, was even worse. Unfortunately for the clone, this sensitivity to the Force played a major role in his mental instability, leading him down a path of carnage and insanity. Although Gideon himself is not forced sensitive, the sensitivity that he is attempting to implant in his clones is artificial. It is against the very will of the Force itself. We know that even in canon, that Force sensitivity can destroy the bodies of clones created from this genetic material. And this is the entire reason why Darth Sidious had to routinely change bodies on a regular basis in order to maintain his life force, as his dark side energy rapidly deteriorated any body in which he inhabited. This is why he sought out Rey as a host. What's interesting about the Gideon clones, however, is they appear to be the same age as the Moth. This leads us to speculate that perhaps Gideon was aware of this mental instability, and may have been attempting to mitigate these problems by allowing the clones to mature further than the other examples. But this is speculative as of now, and still likely would not have wielded any true results he was expecting. The whole point is creating a false force sensitive is an affront on the force itself. It is like spitting in the face of it, and in every single case, those that were not naturally gifted with the ways of the Force have gone insane, because of the simple fact that they are not meant to wield it. And that is why Moff Gideon attempting to create an army of Force sensitives modeled after himself is an absolutely terrible idea, and would have backfired no matter what. But anyway my friends and fellow acolytes, what are your thoughts on this, and what are your thoughts on this massive reveal? What would have occurred if Moff Gideon's clone Force sensitive were allowed to rule the galaxy? As always my friends, stay tuned later today as we will break down the Mandalorian in full force, including the destruction of the Darksaber, what comes next for Mandalore, and much much more. Now is the time to reach out with the Force, and crush that subscribe button. It is your destiny.